So the Bohr model of the atom. Niels Bohr came up with one, one of the more recent models of the atom. And although we know it now that it's not 100% true, we still use it often to describe the model or describe the structure of the atom because it's, it gets us very close to the correct idea. So basically what Bohr figured out was that electrons are traveling in specific orbits. And that's what we have here. In the center here, we have your nucleus. So this red dot in the center is your nucleus. And then we have n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4, n equals 5. It can keep going, 6, 7, etc., up to infinity. The n value here is the energy level. And we're going to correlate these to where electrons reside in the very next chapter. But each transition, meaning each time that an electron gains energy is an absorption, or releases energy is an emission. And each transition is related to a specific color. So when an electron emits that energy, when it absorbs that energy, it's, it's absorbing that color out, so it becomes an absence of color. Hence, we saw um, in a previous video in this chapter, we saw a, um, the spectrum showing kind of a black line in that spot, and that's the absorption spectrum. In emission spectrum, we see that color show up. So here we see that if this electron emits, it drops from the n equals 3 level down to the n equals 2, we see that as red. That's going to occur at a wavelength of 657 nanometers. An electron here, going from the n equals 4 to the n equals 2 level, is going to show up at 486 nanometers and be blue-green blue in color. An electron traveling from n equals 5 to n equals 2 shows up at 434 nanometers and appears to the human eye as violet. So, if an electron makes in a transition from n equals 3 to n equals 2 state, what does this mean? So I'm talking right this box right here. What does this mean? It means the electron is losing energy. And one photon of light is emitted with precisely that amount of energy. There is an energy difference between these two levels. And so what happens, this emits light. And when it's emitted... The electron travels down and it releases a photon. H nu representing photon because the energy of a photon equals H nu. It releases a photon. That photon of energy has a characteristic wavelength which correlates to a characteristic color that we see. If an electron transitions from a lower state to a higher state, what does this mean? So if I have an electron here at n equals 4 and it goes up to n equals 5, a photon of light is absorbed with precisely the amount of energy required to reach that higher energy state. So as here, where the, um, down here the photon was released, here in order for this to happen, a photon has to travel directly to this electron with the correct amount of energy to excite it from the n equals 4 to n equals 5 energy level. Energy must be added to move an electron away from the nucleus away from the nucleus is a higher excited energy state. Energy that's released when an electron falls closer to the nucleus, and this is because it's falling from an excited state back down to its ground state. The closer it is to the nucleus, the more the closer it is to its ground state. One of most, nature's most powerful driving forces is seriously, honestly, the movement towards states of lower energy. Most chemistry is occurring because you're going to a state of lower energy. Bonds are forming to lower energy. Reactions are occurring to lower energy. The same thing's going to occur here. The light that's being emitted, the colors we see, is because it's allowing those electrons to reach an energy state of lower energy. So again, we do call this the Bohr model. Um, it's not a perfect model, but it gives us a really good way for to be able to describe where these electrons are and what's happening. So the light given, hydrogen is the most studied element atom there is because it's the most simple of the atoms. The light given off by the excited hydrogen atoms is not a continuous spectrum, but rather a line spectrum. Continuous spectrum would be if I had gone through here and I see I've got some red... Pretend this is not a bunch of white in the background. You've got red going right into orange. Right into another orange. Right 
into yellow. Into your greens. Into your blues. Into your purples. Continuous speed, just that, a continuous line. Okay, it looks like a rainbow with no separation in color. A discrete or line spectrum is where we have these individual lines that show up. This is what's going to happen when you have an element that's being excited and it's first excited, then it emits the energy back down to get back down to its ground state. It emits at specific wavelengths. It is called a line spectrum. Your hydrogen atom has one proton and one electron, a neutral hydrogen atom. The En, E sub N, is called the energy of the electron in the nth orbit. Nth meaning N equals 1, N equals 2, N equals 3. Which one are you in? E sub N is equal to negative 2.18 times 10 negative 18th. That should be um, super scripted. That should say 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18. I will try to remember to fix that. Joules times 1 over n squared. This value, 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18, is known as the Rydberg constant. So that is a negative sign there. The Rydberg constant, IH. I don't actually know how to spell his name. I think this is correct. The Rydberg constant itself is a positive number, 2.18 times 10 negative 18th joules, but um, the equation itself is negative. So the equation E sub n is negative Rydberg constant times 1 over n squared, where n, again, is equal to the energy level you're in. That's We can calculate the exact energy of that level for any element in the hydrogen spectrum. So again, this is the, the Bohr model itself is not the current accepted understanding of the atom, but it's a really good way for us to demonstrate or describe a general sense of where those electrons are residing, where they're residing in an orbit outside at specific discrete energy levels. The reason it's not ex the accepted understanding at this moment is that we know now that electrons do not move in fixed paths. So what I mean by that is the electrons are not going to move specifically in this fixed circle around here. I'll show you guys a video in another um, a YouTube video. It's really cool in another section that shows a little bit more, and I cannot draw a circle. But we know they don't fix it, move in fixed paths, but the concept of electrons having only certain allowed energies and the existence of energy levels is correct. So although we know that they're not for, um, traveling in these exact circles, the overall concept here is still very close to what we know to be true. The Bohr model is just really used because it's a very simplified model, and it's useful for us to use these simplified models to really understand ground state and excited state electrons. We are going to use this equation, though, which oftentimes I write with the Rydberg constant written in, so that way you don't have to think about the Rydberg constant being separate. So for hydrogen, there are different series, the Lyman series, the Balmer series, the Poshin series, Bracket, and Fun series that um, basically they're going to show you where the electrons are going to fall so we can see them. The Lyman series is when anything falls to the n equals 1 level. So whether it be n equals infinity, n equals 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, doesn't matter. doesn't matter where it's starting, but it's all falling to the n equals 1 energy level. That's called the Lyman series, and it is observed in the ultraviolet region. The series that we see is called the Balmer series. Balmer series is where an electron is excited up to any state, but falls back down to the n equals 2 level specifically. This occurs in the visible region. This is where we see our colors. The Poshin series is the near infrared, bracket far infrared, and fun series even farther infrared. If n equals 1, we know that the energy of the first um, energy level here, the n equals 1 energy level is equal to negative 2.18 times 10 negative 18 joules. For n equals 2, we find this by taking E of 2 is equal to negative 2.18 
times 10 to the minus 18 joules times 1 over n squared, so n over 2 squared. And that gets us the answer there. n equals 3, negative 2.18 times 10 to the mi minus 18 times 1 over 3 squared. And n equals 4, we see the same pattern, e sub 4 equal to negative 2.18 times 10 to the 18th, negative 18th joules times 1 over 4 squared. What you'll see here when you actually calculate these out is these values are getting smaller and smaller. So I started out with negative 2.18 times 10 to negative 18th. For n equals 1, for n equals 2, I'm at negative 5.45 times 10 to negative 19th. n equals 3, negative 2.42 times 10 to negative 19th. n equals 4, negative 1.36 times 10 to negative 19th. These are drawn to scale specifically. They, we see that these values, so the, um, the distance here from n equals 1 to n equals 2 is fairly large. The distance from n equals 2 to n equals 3 is a lot smaller. n equals 3 to n equals 4 is a lot smaller. n equals 5 would be even smaller. So as we increase those energy levels, they get closer and closer together as we increase, as we go up in what level, what energy level we're in. That's kind of drawn in the series here, but not as clearly. But they do get closer together as we go higher and higher in those energy shells. So let's work an example quick. Calculate the wavelength of light emitted and or absorbed when a hydrogen electron makes a transition from the n equals 4 to n equals 6 state. Well, first thing you want to recognize is, was the energy absorbed or emitted? Absorbed means it went from lower to higher energy level. It needed to absorb energy to be able to reach that higher energy level. Emitted went from higher to lower. It had to emit that energy to reach that lower energy level. So here, I'm going from the n equals 4 to n equals 6 state which means that I am absorbing energy. The reason I specify that is that you should see the energy come into play here. The energy, energy change should be either positive or negative depending on if you've increased or decreased your energy here. Here we're absorbing energy, so it should be positive. I need to put energy in. Now, the equation I've given you so far is this equation here. The other equation that we can, we can do this equation, we can calculate the energy for both energy levels, both n equals 4 and n equals 6, and then take the difference between them. We want change in energy, though. We want energy final minus energy initial. So if I'm looking at the change in energy, it's energy final minus energy initial. I know that the energy final is equal to negative 2.18 times 10 to the minus 18th joules times 1 over n final squared. I know that the energy initial is equal to negative 2.18 times 10 to the minus 18th times 1 over n initial squared. I'm going to simplify this equation by writing this out. You can do them as two separate equations if you'd like. I like putting them into one because it just makes my life easier and it's one last step to do. But I can take this, I still need the final minus initial because it's always final minus initial when you want change in. So I'm going to still take final minus initial here, but I'm going to write it out in, the sim in what I consider to be a simpler form. So change in energy is equal to negative 2.18 times 10 to the minus 18th times 1 over n final, n final is 6, 6 squared minus n initial, which n initial is 4, 1 over 4 squared. When you calculate this out, you should be able to plug this right in your calculator. You should find the answer here to be 7.569. I'm underlining that 6 because my sig figs end at this 6, but I don't want to round yet. Times 10 to the minus 20 joules. Again, notice that the energy here is in fact absorbed. I'm going from 4 to 6, so my change in energy is a positive value. 
even if it was a negative value, we're gonna, we really want to calculate wavelength here. In order to do wavelength, though, I need to know the energy first. Um, your energy of a photon, you can take the absolute value of your energy because you need it to be a positive value to calculate your wavelength. The positive negative sign of the energy here is just showing me if it's absorbed or emitted. Absorbed energy of positive emitted will be negative. So take the absolute value if it's a negative value. And we know E is equal to H nu, which is equal to HC over lambda. We're going to solve for lambda. Lambda equals HC over E equals 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds times 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. divided by our energy that we just calculated, 7.569. Again, I'm underlining that 6 so I can make sure I know where my sig figs are, times 10 to the negative 20 joules. My joules cancel, my seconds cancel, and I'm left with meters, which is perfect, so I'm looking for wavelength. And I find the wavelength here to be 2.624, underline that 2, times 10 to the minus 6 meters. Now I'm going to put this in nanometers. Why? Because usually we report wavelength in nanometers. I didn't specify that it needed to be nanometers in this question. I would have to specify in a quiz or exam so you guys know. But um, most often we're going to put this in nanometers. So I'm going to go ahead and convert to nanometers. 2.624 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. Underlining that too so I know where my sig figs are. Times 10 the ninth nanometers divided by one meter equals two six two four nanometers which I round to 200 or 2620 nanometers what does that mean that means if I emit or absorb light a hydrogen electron transitions from the n equals four to the n equals 6 level. So photon of energy has come in, and it's just enough energy to promote that electron up to n equals 6. It has absorbed just enough energy. This will show up the wavelength of this light. It would actually absorb the light at the wavelength 2,620 nanometers.